See, normally there's a pretty predictable relationship between the price and quantity of a good sold. Price goes up, quantity goes down, and vice versa. As with most things, there are some exceptions. And the F-Series and the Raptor in particular are great examples of exceptions to that economic rule. Ford trucks used to be basic, rugged machines for the average Joe just looking to get work done. But over time, Ford trucks have become luxury vehicles with the highest tech of any product that the company produces. And if you consider luxury to be any vehicle over $45,000, then the F-150 is the best-selling luxury vehicle in the entire country. Not only that, the F-Series is the best-selling vehicle in the United States. Every year the price goes up and Ford trucks stay on top of market share. The competitors put huge incentives on their trucks, give away amazing lease deals that undercut Ford's prices by thousands, and yet the F-Series remains king 40 years straight now. So how does the Ford pickup get more expensive every year and still outsell everything else? Well, to put it plainly, it's the best. If you want a good truck at an affordable price, you could buy a Chevy or a Toyota or even a Nissan. If you want the best truck, you buy a Ford. What makes it the best? Well, that brings me to the Raptor. Driving the Raptor is not quite what I thought it would be. I was expecting a harsh, snarling beast of a truck. You know, something like a dune buggy on steroids. The only other true purpose-built off-road vehicle that I've driven was a Jeep Wrangler. I was expecting something similar, rugged, primitive feel from the Raptor's driving experience, just with a lot more power. What you actually get is much more akin to a Range Rover Sport pickup. You see, it may not look like it, but the Raptor is a luxury vehicle, in every sense of the word. It's over $60,000 in the configuration I tested it in, and this one only has a super cab, not the larger crew cab. You could buy two decent F-150s in the STX trim for the price of one Raptor. It makes sense too, since I would guess that probably 7 out of 10 customers that buy a new Raptor will never take it off-road. And I bet those off-road statistics are similar to customers who are buying a $100,000 Range Rover. The one thing that exceeded my expectations the most with the Raptor is how comfortable it is. First of all, the seats and driving position are phenomenal. You step into this leather throne and you sink into these deliciously large and comfy seats. The bolstering holds you in just the right amount, it feels nice to the touch, and there's plenty of room around you. Once you're in your throne, you feel like you're in command of the world, and that digital display can show every conceivable piece of data you could possibly want. If you want to see more detail of that, this is not the video for that because every other video out there shows how you can have multiple trailers programmed into there, you can change their driving mode, blah blah blah. My video I'm trying to keep a little bit different, so I will say that the steering wheel has all the controls you will need aside from the climate control, which is pretty cool. However, all the controls on the console area are also beefy and super intuitive. So if you're not one of those people that likes to do everything from the steering wheel, if you're a bit more of a traditionalist, all the controls are there. Super easy to grab, super e easy to identify just by touching them too. The paddle shifters are even made of solid aluminum, which is super satisfying to the touch. Once I got going in this thing, I was surprised by how comfortable and soft the ride was without any annoying body roll or weird quirks that you normally expect from such a tall truck. Look at how the wheel drops and comes back up, but the rest of the truck hardly moves at all when I go over this bump. Well, that bump was actually a dip that's over six inches deep and full of water, but it felt like nothing in the Raptor. Now I have to emphasize that I'm not a truck guy. I've never been a part of truck culture so I approached the review of a truck from an outsider's perspective. Therefore, I was surprised to find out that the Raptor drives like a smooth, sporty vehicle and not like a big, hefty truck as I would have expected. 
So I haven't driven a Range Rover, but I've been driven in one. And the Raptor experience reminded me of that more than anything else. The Raptor has all the capability and most of the luxury of a Range Rover, but at about 60% of the price. I think we can all agree that a Ford Raptor is a lot cooler than a Range Rover too. You show up to a big event in a Range Rover, you're just some other rich asshole. If you show up in a Raptor, then you're a rich guy who has something interesting. The Raptor rides like a cloud over rough terrain, but it can also turn on a dime relative to other trucks, thanks to its clever suspension and the lightness of its all aluminum body. It's lean, mean, and fast. Acceleration is surprising not because it throws you back in your seat, but because you don't realize how fast you're going until you're actually going. If you punch the accelerator, you don't get crazy wheel spin or jerky feeling or anything, but all of a sudden you're going 80 miles per hour and you have no idea how you got there. It's pretty awesome stuff. The suspension and aluminum body are only the beginning of the technology though. It also comes with Sync Connect, which means you can remotely start, stop, lock, unlock, and track your vehicle from anywhere in the world on your phone. All you have to do is download this Ford Pass app and then activate it, and in about a minute, you can control your vehicle from your phone anywhere in the world. Luxury, I would argue, is defined by convenience, and Sync Connect gives you a ton of that. You can't remember if you locked your truck at the airport before going on your nice vacation? No problem. Just use the app, make sure it's locked. Want to always step into a cool truck after letting it sit in the sun all day while you're at work? No problem. Just set a start time on the app for five to ten minutes before you get off work, and it'll be nice and chilled when you step in. As far as off-roading, the Raptor is obviously a beast. I'm not going to embarrass myself here trying to describe its off-road capability, so please refer to more experienced people for that. But I can say I felt like a pro, even though I have zero off-road experience when I took this thing into some muddy and grassy areas around my house. As far as practicality, there's nothing this truck can't do that any other top-of-the-line truck can do. There's simply no compromise when it comes to towing, hauling, and getting shit done. This is truly the only truck I know of that you can work in all day and then take it out to play. And before the Chevy guy tries any BS, there is a bed liner so you can drop your sharp steel toolbox in the bed all day long and you'll never see any damage. Overall, the Raptor is a microcosm of everything that makes the F-Series the best. It's high-tech, indestructible, practical, fast, capable, comfy, luxurious, and in my opinion, it's the best looking truck on the market by far. Dealers can't get enough of them. Consumers can't get enough of them. They're in such high demand that they easily sell for 10K over sticker around the country. And the crazy thing is that still seems like a pretty good deal. The rules of economics always have exceptions and few things are more exceptional than the Ford Raptor. Thanks for watching guys. Hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.